Which one? Al Shalty. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Oh, that wasn't We're going to begin on page 247, and I ask those who are able to please rise. And when you make that uh, ascension, please triple check that your cell phones are muted and uh, we mitigate any uh, distractions this evening.
Sovereign of the universe in awe and humility, I have come to stand before you to pray with your people Israel and on their behalf. Who is fit for such a task? Yet you are present to us whenever our voices rise in praise. In your great mercy, have compassion on me and on all us all. Let my congregation not falter on my account, nor I on theirs. Guide the lips of those who lead your people in worship. Strengthen the faith and purify our hearts. And let your love draw a veil over all our failings. So may our prayers ascend this day to the throne of your glory. As we all say, Amen. Please be seated. So we invite up Nancy Drapin and Barbara Rothman to light our holiday uh, Yom HaKippurim candles. I want to say Shabbat, but it's wrong. Page 248. Oh, wait, I have to hand you a mic. Remember to turn this yeah. one. Blessed is the Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot and commands us to kindle the lights on the Day of Atonement. the Lord our God, ruler of the universe, for giving us life, for sustaining us, and for enabling us to reach this season. is the prayer of people not free to make their own decisions, people forced to say what they do not mean. In repeating this prayer tonight, we identify with the agony of our forebears who had to say yes when they meant no. Kol Nidre is also a confession. We are all transgressors, all exiled from the highest we know, all in need of the healing of forgiveness and reconciliation for what we have done, for what we have yet to do, what we ask pardon, for rash words, broken pledges, insincere assurances, 
foolish promises. May we indeed find forgiveness this night on page 251 as we pray together for transgressions against God, the day of atonement atones, but for transgressions of one human being against another, the day of atonement does not atone until they have made peace with one another. Please rise. In the sight of God and of the congregation, no matter how far some of us may have transgressed by departing from our people and our heritage, we pray as one on this night of repentance. Kol nidre, a whisper of wings, as promises are remembered. Saint and sinner alike commune with the Most High. We are at one. Heart of all life, from this day of atonement to the next, may we reach it in peace. All Israel makes these vows to turn from evils and wrongdoing and to walk in the way of your law, the path of justice and right. Yet we know our weakness, how prone we are to fail. Help us to keep these vows made with contrite hearts. We have come to seek pardon and forgiveness.
On page 252 in the middle, we'll now recite the Kol Nidre prayer together in English. Let all our vows and oaths, all the promises we make and the obligations we incur to you, O God, between this Yom Kippur and the next, be null and void should we, after honest effort, find ourselves unable to fulfill them. Then may we be absolved of them. Oh, 
knowingly or not, the whole community of Israel and all who live among them have sinned. Let them be forgiven together. As in your love, you have been patient with this people from the time you led us out of Egypt to the present day. So in your great love, may you forgive your people now. Vayomer Adonai, Salachti Kidvarecha, and God said, I have pardoned in response to your plea. Blessed is the eternal God, ruler of the universe, for giving us life, sustaining us, and for enabling us to reach this season. Adonai, only one of blessing, whose presence fills creation. You bring us here. Baruch Atah Adonai, only one of blessing. We continue as we remain standing with our call to prayer, the Baruch Hu on page 253. On page 254 at the bottom, we read together, when justice burns within us like a flaming fire, when love evokes willing sacrifice from us, when to the last full measure of selfless devotion, we demonstrate our belief in the ultimate triumph of truth and righteousness, then your goodness enters our lives, then you live within our hearts, and we through righteousness behold your presence. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam All right, folks, you made it. <laughs> Dramatic opening. Holy moly's. If you are becoming Bar Bat Mitzvah in the next uh, seven months, come on down. Help us with the Via Hafta. 
I see you. Your parents see you. God sees you. Page 255. These are our students becoming bar and bat mitzvah in the next, this, in 5784. How about that? Uh, this is a lectern. Come up here, right here. What are you, wait, 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 wait. Turn the page. It's English. It's even easier. Turn the page. Come on. There you go. Right here. We're going to read the one in the regular font, and they out there are going to read the one in italics. Okay? Let's do it together. Ready? It's English. You can do this. True and enduring are the words spoken by our prophets. You are the living God. Your word brings life and light to the soul. You are the first and the last. Besides you, there is no redeemer or savior. You are the strength of our life, the power that saves us. Your majesty and your truth abide forever. You have been the help of our people in time of trouble. You are refuge in all generations. Your power was manifest when we went free out of Egypt. And every liberation from bondage, we see it. May your law of freedom rule the hearts of all your children and your law of justice unite them in friendship. May the righteous of all nations rejoice in your love and triumph by your power.
לפני משה ומרים. זה אלי ענו ואמרו. אדוני את יעקב וגאלו מיד חזק ממנו ברוך אתה אדוני גל We continue on the next page with uh, Hashki Venu on page 258. Hashki <laughs> Venu Hashki Venu For on this day of atonement, page 259, for on this day atonement shall be made for you to purify you. You shall be cleansed from all your sins before the eternal. We continue on the next, well, actually it's not the next page. It is in our uh, program, our uh, uh, supplemental for our tefillah. We uh, ask those who are able to please rise. Na 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 
qui pouvait en aura El Elyon Comme le chassadim Tovim Ve kone Hakol Ve zoher Chastei avot Ve imahot U mevi geula Levenei venei למען שמו ואהבה. זוכרנו לחיים, מלך חפץ בחיים, וחוטבינו בספר החיים. Shia umagin Baruch At Adonai Magin Avraham Bezrat Sarah Amen At Agibor Leolam Adonai Mechaye Hakol Ata רב להושיע מחלקל חיים בחסד מחיה הכל ברחמים רבים סומך נופלים להחיות הכל, ברוך אתה אדוני, מחיה הכל. אמן. God won't ask what kind of car you drove, but will ask how many people you drove who didn't have transportation. God won't ask the square footage of your house, but will welcome, but will ask how many people you welcomed into your home. God won't ask about the fancy clothes you had in your closet, but will ask how many of those clothes helped the needy. God won't ask you about your social status, but will ask you what kind of class you displayed. God won't ask how many material possessions you had, but will ask if they dictated your life. God won't ask what your, how your highest salary was, but will ask if you compromised your character to obtain that salary. God won't ask how much overtime you worked, but will ask if you worked overtime for your family and loved ones. God won't ask how many promotions you received, but will ask how you promoted others. 
God won't ask what your job title was, but will ask if you just formed your job to do the, to do the best of your ability, if you performed it. God won't ask what you did to help yourself, but will ask what you did to help others. And God won't ask how many friends you had, but will ask how many people to whom you were a true friend. God won't ask what you did to protect your rights, but will ask what you did to protect the rights of others. God won't ask in what neighborhood you lived, but will ask how you treated your neighbors. God won't ask about the color of your skin, but will ask about the content of your character. God won't ask how many times your deeds matched your words, but will ask how many times they didn't. These are the questions that we should be thinking about on this Yom Kippur as we continue on page 268 with the words of Ray Say. It's 266. This just in. Page change. <laughs> On page 267, we pray together. We gratefully acknowledge that you are our creator and preserver, the rock of our life and our protecting shield. We give thanks to you for our lives which are in your hand, for our souls which are ever in your keeping, for your wondrous providence and your continuous goodness which you bestow upon us day by day. Truly your mercies never fail and your loving kindness never ceases. Therefore, do we forever put our trust in you. O oh God, let life abundant be the heritage of all children of your covenant. Blessed is the eternal God to whom our thanks are due. We take a moment and we pause for a silent personal prayer, a personal meditation.
We continue with our vidui, our confessions of sin on page 269, as we ask those who are able to please rise. Eloheinu velohea votenu, tavo lefanecha. Let's pray together. Our God and God of our mothers and fathers, grant that our prayers may reach you. Do not be deaf to our pleas, for we are not so arrogant and stiff-necked as to say before you, our God and God of all ages, we are perfect and have not sinned. Rather do we confess, we have gone astray, we have sinned, we have transgressed. Ay, 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 ay. Falnu sheker Ay 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 Mom. 
Together, sing with me. Titanu, ay 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 ay. We all have committed offenses. Together, we confess these human sins, the sins of arrogance, bigotry, and cynicism of deceit, egotism, flattery, and greed, injustice, and jealousy. Some of us kept grudges, were lustful, malicious, or narrow-minded. Others were obstinate or possessive, quarrelsome, rancorous, or selfish. There was violence, weakness of will, xenophobia. We yielded to temptation and showed zeal for bad causes. This past Friday night, I shared how the Blue Dove Foundation, an organization that created awareness about uh, mental illness and addiction in the Jewish community, noticed the possible, possible negative impact of the vidui that we just recited together as a community. Because we can have on our mental health when we are reciting all of these negatives. The Blue Dove Foundation suggests we need to be mindful of the complexity of human life and its ups and downs, and that we are far more than any one label or misdeed or illness. And just as the Vidui catches the catch-all for misdeeds that we might have done that we might not have been aware of, we should recognize that there are plenty of deeds that we performed as well without realizing it. We are not our sins. We are not our mistakes. We are not our diagnoses. We are human, and we are created in God's divine image. And so in this tradition of offering a, uh, so the tradition of offering a positive vidui, in addition to the, the vidui we just um, recited, has been created with words to help us actually become better people. What things have we done in the past that we actually want to carry forward with us into the future? This idea really came to be from Rabbi Viva Funky last week when she, with a group of teens at Hebrew High, came up with a list of positive aspirations, which serves as a powerful reminder of the values and qualities we aim to embody in our interactions in the world. So I, if I had the time I would have put it in your program, we would have all read it together. So in this case, I'll recite it on our behalf. They wrote, aspiring to be our best, it is our goodness we must confess. We know too well how we fall short in all the ways we miss the mark. So in the place of beating chest with fist, with a gentle hand on heart, we recall this list. We have forgiven. We have respected ourselves. We have looked in the mirror and liked what we saw. We have taken our time to think things through. We have been true to ourselves. We have been kind. We have uplifted others. We have been open-hearted. We have lovingly remembered those who are no longer with us. We have been accepting. We have listened to ourselves and others. We have been thoughtful. We have connected. We have worked hard. We have been honored. We have been solution makers. We have made others laugh. We have inspired. We have made ourselves proud. Let us say amen.
Please be seated. As we continue on page 271 of the al Khaits, the tradition together, now may it be your will, God of all generations, to forgive all our sins, to pardon all our wrongdoings, and to blot out all our transgressions. Al the sin we have committed against you under duress or by choice, together the sin we have committed against you consciously or unconsciously, and the sin we have committed against you openly or secretly, the sin we have committed against you in our thoughts, the sin we have committed against you with our words, and the sin we have committed against you by the abuse of power. For all these, O God of mercy, forgive us, pardon us, grant us atonement. The sin we have committed against you by hardening our hearts. The sin we have committed against you by profaning your name. And the sin we have committed against you by disrespect for parents and teachers. The sin we have committed against you by speaking slander. The sin we have committed against you by dishonesty in our work. And the sin we have committed against you by hurting others in any way. For all these, O oh God of mercy, forgive us, pardon us, grant us atonement. just want to offer this public service announcement that counting how many pages left does not make the service go any faster. <laughs> With that being said, let's jump to page 278. That'll help. Shema <laughs> Kol. I don't know how to transition from that to this right now. <laughs> but I'll try, so let's take a deep breath.
On page 279, hear our voice, eternal God, have compassion upon us, and with that compassion, accept our prayer. Help us to return to you, O God, then truly shall we return, renew our days as in the past. Consider our words, look into our inmost thoughts. Do not cast us away from your presence, do not remove your Holy Spirit. Do not cast us away when we are old, as our strength diminishes, do not abandon us. Do not abandon us, eternal God. Do not be far from us. For you, O oh God, do we wait. For you, our God, will answer. <laughs> Thank you. 
we continue on page 280 with Avinu Malkenu. As we ask those who are able to please rise. Avinu Malkenu Shma Kolenu. Avinu Malkenu, hear our prayer. Avinu Malkenu, let the gates of heaven be open to our plea. Avinu Malkenu, let this be an hour of compassion and favor. Avinu Malkenu, give strength to your people Israel. Avinu Malkenu, remember those slain for their love of your name. Avinu Malkenu, remember those who went through fire and water for your sake. Avinu Malkenu, be mindful of us and help us. Avinu Malkenu, inscribe us in the book of forgiveness. Avinu Malkenu, inscribe us for the blessing in the book of life. Avinu Malkenu, inscribe us in the book of deliverance and redemption. Avinu Malkenu, be gracious and answer us, for we have little merit. Treat us generously and with kindness and be our help.
Please be seated. Has anyone noticed the irony about phones these days? It's easier to make a phone call than to schlep to see someone in person. Even still, it's easier to send a text than to make a phone call and have to engage in all the pleasantries of a conversation and wait for it. Firing off an email is even easier because we don't have to communicate in real time. There's no risk of a conversation at all. So technology that we created to improve human interaction, making it possible to reach someone when they could not otherwise be reached has become the substitute for human interaction. And I speak from personal experience. <laughs> Just a couple of weeks ago, I celebrated my birthday. Not one person called me this year. Not one person. I'm not blaming anyone in here. Don't get me wrong. We have enough guilt on Yom Kippur. You don't need this. I just want to make the point that is where I think we've gotten to in technology. I've got some, I don't know, 15, 16, 1700 friends on Facebook spanning 40 years of friendship. And they're nearly... 400 families in this congregation. Don't get me wrong. I got lots of texts. I got emojis. <laughs> I got Facebook comments of happy birthday with little active memes and things. I got a few text messages from friends who were clearly holding a phone capable of calling me at the time that they thumb type their text, but literally, for the first time in my life, not one person called me this year. And I just wonder if I'm feeling like I'm missing out on the human connection, then I bet somebody else in here is as well. The Torah says it is not good for us to be alone. And it feels like the closer the world gets to our fingertips, the further it gets from our hearts. Even when we are out alone, we engage in a behavior that almost ensures that we remain that way. Loneliness is the new epidemic. We are missing out on our most elemental need as humans, connection and feeling as though we belong. I can't believe the amount of folks who self isolate on their phones, earbuds so firmly in their ears as to block out any possible conversation starter or connection maker like, did you see the game last night? Where did you get the shoes, etc. Henry David Thoreau wrote, city life is millions of people being lonesome together. As we are aging, we are finding ourselves in a peculiar society where it has become harder to meet people, harder to have success at dating, harder 
to actually enter into a spontaneous connection, even though we have more tools available to do it than ever before. We look at our teens and adult children, and we puzzle at how they can spend hours on their phones and devices texting each other, but never actually being with each other, even when they're in the same room. And here's the truly scary thing. Many people are just giving up, having fewer long-term relationships, meeting less, a steady decrease in (laughs) face-to-face interaction. You get one, I can't even get one. He gets a phone call, I don't get a phone call. Good Lord. (sighs) Have you noticed the irony about phones these days? (laughs) It's like... (laughs) Checks in the mail, thanks for that one. Harvard sociologist Robert Putnam, in his classic work, Bowling Alone, laments that we feel vaguely and uncomfortably disconnected. We have changed our environment more quickly than we know how to change ourselves. We want to live in a more civil, trustworthy, more collectively caring community, but we are lost at how to get there. Loneliness causes people to feel empty and unwanted. Isn't it ironic that loneliness leads us to crave human contact, yet this state of mind often makes it more difficult to form connections with other people? This is not a surprise to most of the people in this room. I think we've all noticed this dilemma that's been created over the last few years. I think think most of us have a hunch that something's not quite in the relationship with the universe and our place in society. It doesn't feel quite as rooted or meaningful as it should. And we're not, we can't put our finger on it. We're just not sure why. According to a recent study, six out of 10 Phoenix residents feel lonely, which is on par, by the way, with the national average. But what's scary is that 80% of young people under the age of 18 report being lonely. And the same study found that that social loneliness and social isolation impact our physical and our mental health. Some research suggests that chronic loneliness may shorten life expectancy even more than being overweight and just as much as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Why are we so lonely? Now, one reason could be the changing nature of work. Work is one of those key resources of friendship and community. Just think of your own relationship. Surely someone or a few of you, your closest relationships, even perhaps your relationship with your spouse may have started in a workplace. Yet the connectedness of the workplace has been diminishing in recent years, right? From hopping from job to job or city to city or steady work as we've gotten into uh, the gig business, if you will, as jobs have become harder to find and more remote. as People now work less in an office and more lonely in their homes. The Torah says it's not good for us to be alone. The Talmud tells the story of a rabbi who is a faith healer All he had to do was lay his hands on someone and they were cured. Then he fell ill and he called for a friend to come and heal him. 
Why couldn't he just heal himself? Asked the Talmud. And it answers, because a prisoner cannot release themselves from prison. Sometimes when all you see most of the day is a glowing screen in front of you, it can feel like solitary confinement. We are the most social beings on the planet. We need human touch. The word of another. People, not pixels. That's why a real community instead of virtual is so important. One that keeps us tied together no matter what. A place, a people that we can count on. It's where we meet face to face and give each other strength. It's where people know who we are and miss us when we're not there. And if the song from Cheers is playing in your head right now, it's in mine too. Sometimes you really do want to go where somebody just knows your name. Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs wrote, Community is a society with a human face. It's the redemption of the solitude. The root of the word synagogue is sin. Not that kind of sin. S-Y-N. It's the Greek prefix that implies togetherness. But in Hebrew, a synagogue is a Beit Knesset, a place where people assemble. A congregation is where we congregate. Synagogues came to be not so much for people to find God, but for Jews to find each other. Why do we have the concept of a minion, the Jewish rule that you must pray with a minimum of 10 adults? Because we want Jews to get together to say their prayers. Because most often, the answer to our most often felt, our most heartfelt prayer, the prayer from relief from loneliness, comes not from God, but from the person right next to us in prayer. Rabbi Mordechai Kaplan literally the founder of the Jewish Community Center, the concept, the idea, the most, arguably the most influential rabbi of the 20th century, the early 20th century, he said that the primary purpose of the synagogue is to combat loneliness and to weld Jews who live in the neighborhood into a conscious community. Note that he mentions neighborhood. The concept in many places, that's becoming extinct. Earlier this week, I kid you not, I ran a report. We have 50 zip codes, members of our synagogue, representing our membership list. That means the function of the congregation today is as much unifying element as, as is more important than it ever was even in Kaplan's day. Community is essential to Jewish existence. It is, an existential, it is an essential protection against loneliness. Now, we've come to know each other pretty well over the last 12 years, and I've been privileged to be a rabbi during that time. And you know by now that at this point in the sermon, I'm going to have a call to action. Something I'm going to challenge us to work on and accomplish in this 5784 in the new year. A synagogue can accomplish many things. But perhaps what we are best at is connecting people to other people. And fostering meaningful relationships. In the coming months, we are going to use that technology that we talked about at the beginning, to connect us in real life. Sometime soon, you're going to get an email, because I'm not calling you. It's too many of you. You're going to get an email with a simple form. I want to fill in the details. We're going to match you with somebody in the congregation, and I want you to find the time, get together, have a cup of coffee, 
talk. And once you've done that, you can sign up again. And we'll give you, we'll even throw in some suggested topics of conversation if it's been a while and you don't remember how to do it. <laughs> it's really that simple. But I have one condition. You have to leave your phone in your pocket or in your purse until the conversation is done. We're going to turn this technology, this inflicted loneliness on its head with human touch, with human heart. We're going to use it to get to know each other better again. In all the days of creation, there was only one element that was deemed not good. Human loneliness. For the Torah says it is not good for us to be alone. If the synagogue is the house of God, then we have a responsibility to do all we can to honor the message of this commandment, to combat and confront the loneliness that is so pervasive in the modern world. A story is told of a mother who sent her young daughter to the corner store for some milk. After a half hour had passed, the child had not returned. The mother naturally began to worry. After an hour, she grew frantic. In an effort to allay her fears, she got into the car and she set out to search for her daughter. And almost as soon as she pulled away from the house, however, she saw her daughter coming home towards her. And at the sight of her, her mother, the mother dashed from the car and scooped the small girl into her arms. Where were you? The mother pleaded. Didn't you know that I'd been worried sick about you? It's been an hour. What were you doing all this time? She said, my doll, my friend's doll was run over by a car. It got broke and I was helping her to fix it. And she said, were you able to fix the doll? And the girl said, no. So instead, I helped her to cry. In human relationships, in the synagogue community, we can help each other to cry. We can celebrate life's joys and oys. We can see and greet each other face to face, not Facebook to Facebook. In a room filled with so many tonight, too many of us are feeling lonely and alone. And the Torah says, it is not good for us to be alone. Each of us can do something about it. We don't need to feel lonely. Because in an age of loneliness, the synagogue, which is all of us, is an answer, if not the answer. We are the voice that answers when another soul calls out for companionship. And we can answer just like Abraham did last week when he said, Hineni, here I am. Can he hear it so? May this be our work as we do Jewish in the 5784 to say amen.
We move to our concluding prayers of Alenu and Kaddish on page 156. Don't worry, we're going backwards to go forward. Don't worry. 156, please rise. flip back to page 283 for a poem from Rabbi Alvin Fine. One of my favorite, he writes, birth is a beginning and death a destination and life is a journey. And from childhood to maturity and youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion and then perhaps to wisdom or from weakness to strength or strength to weakness and often back again. From health to sickness and back, we pray to health again. From offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion and grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, and life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage to life everlasting. In a moment, we'll recite the Kaddish Yatom. I'd like to pause and everyone who wishes to recall uh, the name of a loved one that they're thinking of that we may have lost in recent days or that you're thinking of that we lost at this season in years past that uh, most poignantly are thinking of on a night, a holiday like this where we're so used to being with family so we're so acutely aware of them not being here. If you wish to say it out loud, you can say it in your heart, I'll give you the space and time to do so. Yit Gadal Vit Kadash Meiraba. Bealma divra herte, la michma hute, Bechaechon of Yomechon of Hay de Hobet Israel, Bagala of Isman Kariv Imru, Amen. Yehesh me rabba me barach le alam o meal maya, Yit barach vish the bach, vit paar, vit ramam vit nase, Vit hadar vit hale vit halal shame kudisha brehu, Le ela minko berchata vishirata. Tush bechata benechemata da amiran be alma vimru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya bechaim alenu vel ko Israel vimru amen. O se shalom bimru mav huya se shalom alenu vel ko Israel vimru amen. May the source of peace and peace and comfort to all who mourn and bring comfort to all who bereave as we say amen. Stay on page 159. We, were, we skipped, but that's okay. Go back to page 159. Yeah, page 159.
we will continue our service tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And I would encourage you all um, to stay for the uh, study session, as I announced last week, our year of Torah, that we'll study uh, in the afternoon. And we have the healing service with Cancer Noah before we uh, move to Yisker. It's not like you have lunch plans, people, so <laughs> why not hang out with us? Um, we'll pause here, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Good yantav.